This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue with Book 2, Unlearning the World. This is Chapter 1, Part 2 of Healing and Atonement are Identical. Awareness of dreaming is the real function of God's teachers. They watch the dream figures come and go, shift and change, suffer and die. Yet they are not deceived by what they see. They recognize that to behold a dream figure as sick and separate is no more real than to regard it as healthy and beautiful. Unity alone is not a thing of dreams and it is this God's teachers acknowledge as behind the dream, beyond all seeming and yet surely theirs. Manual for Teachers, Section 12 I can hold on to that thought. Even though some may seem to be sick or dying, The mind sees that as impossible. It is impossible for the body to be sick. It is impossible to really die. Death gets redefined as being whenever you are upset in any way. That is death. That is helpful because it brings it back to the psychological to the realm of mind and gets away from the physical realm as if something happens when a body quits breathing. You have heard the expression that someone passed on or made their transition. Transition into what? Friend, yesterday my son came in Not just crying, but wailing. It was a great opportunity for me not to get stuck. I wanted to be loving, but I did not know how to communicate without getting caught up in it. I just held the intention of being loving and not getting caught up. But I felt like I did not know how to communicate that. I didn't know how to express being loving or comforting. Does it mean holding him and hugging him? He told me that the log had fallen on his hand. David Yes, he wanted to show me too. I sat down with him and simply held my intention. In a matter of a few seconds, he quit talking about the hand and started talking about other things. When it was not shared in the mind, the attention shifted from the hand to just sitting there. There we were on the bed, just talking about other things for about five or ten minutes. One of them was, When will my mom be home? And I said, Oh, she is running some errands. That is part of the conditioning too, of wanting to look for someone that is familiar and sympathetic. But once again, when it is not shared, the attention can shift. Like the example you always share about going to the Christian science class when he had that scab on his face, like the elephant man. This was Christian science, so neither the kids nor the teacher made a big deal about the scab. Nobody even mentioned it. Friend, and it healed very quickly then, but for about a week, everywhere, Else we went, people would say things like, Oh my gosh, what happened to you? Are you okay? 
people really made a big thing of it. For me, there was such contrast in going where it was never mentioned. Wow, what a difference that makes. David, it really puts it into practice. Friend, he did not feel the need to go in and tell them that this is not the way he usually looks. He did not explain it to anybody. David, there was another story about an elderly woman in Christian science who had experiences like that her whole life. Once she picked up her granddaughter at school after the girl was sent home by the school nurse. Her daughter was just going on and on in a panic about the nurse saying that it could be this or it could be that. But the grandmother was just not giving attention to it at all, not lending her mind to share that perception. She just let it diffuse naturally because the mind is literally calling out, Teach me that this is not so. Friend, one area where I feel at loss is when the kids feel sick and want to stay home. I have said, okay, so stay home. But then the school requires that you write a note and explain why they stayed home. I feel like I cannot write that they were sick. What do I say? David, sickness is, in a sense, a mind calling for help. Friend, so, My daughter had a sick mind calling for help today. (laughs) David, in your mind, you know it. You have to know the meaning and let the words be used. Jesus was so clever about saying the words and yet you can see his meaning from his perspective. But someone could read an entirely different meaning into it. The important thing is that I have to be in my right mind. Then the behavior will feel automatic. There will be hugging and holding through me, not by me. You have to be anchored at that point where you know everything is okay and that whatever words come, let them come. They may be like an icebreaker or a lead-in to something else. But the whole point of being anchored is that it is just impossible to perceive sickness. It is impossible that the Son of God would be sick. As you see your brother, you see yourself. If your brother is a sick body, then you cannot avoid seeing yourself in the same way as a body. If you think of and see your brother as a body, you think of and see yourself as a body. There is no way you can unmind, unspirit your body. As you see him, you will see yourself. As you think of him, you will think of yourself. Never forget this. For in him you will find yourself or lose yourself. Text chapter 8, section 3 Friend Even our friend limping, I still see that. But to say, well, I'm not going to talk about it, is not the point either. David It is an interpretation Bill Thetford was a psychologist and one time Jesus wanted him to go to a rehab conference. Part of Bill's resistance was that he could just not stand to see broken bodies because it reminded him of what he thought was his own frailty. And literally, that is what is happening when you start interpreting behaviors, whether they are limps, coughs, 
or the speckles you saw in some of the AIDS patients. Whenever we start to make any interpretations, we have made the error real. Then you ask, what do I do now? How do I put the pieces together? This is a perceptual problem. The more you get anchored into the Holy Spirit's thought system, the more the unreality of sickness has to dawn on the mind. In your mind, what you are doing when you come to your brothers is you are constantly reminding them of their wholeness. The mind of the healer petitions the mind of the patient, so to speak. There is another way. God's Son is whole and complete. And that is at the mind level. It is about being anchored in seeing your brother as whole. And then, whatever is most helpful at a behavioral level will be given. Jesus is using the body to do the miracle. The doubt thoughts come in when we decide that we should have done this or we should have done that. Oh, you still think you can do? Then you do not realize that it is just a matter of aligning with the right mind or the wrong mind, with the behavior following automatically. You still think you could have done this or that you should have done that? then you are still playing God. You are still in the arrogance of trying to run the miracle yourself. And that means you still believe that the body is autonomous, that you can control your behavior, that there is a separate individual person, the I, and the I can. Friend, In the example you used with her son, is it like saying that instead of looking back and saying, was I helpful to him or did I convey love to him? It is just to look at how you felt and whether you were in your right mind. And if there is doubt, then I guess you were not. I mean, if there is any doubt about doing it right or if I should have done more, then I guess it cannot be the right mind. David, in the moment, we bring it back to this moment. That is where the intention and passion to get clear comes in. The only way that we will be free of doubt forever is to be absolutely clear of cause and effect. Absolutely clear of those those thoughts having watched our minds so closely. I will let that one go. I will let that one go. When that is really done consistently, the mind becomes anchored and certain that love is really all there is. The stepping stone is to see everything as love or a call for love. But you realize that even that has to fall away. Friend. So in the case of her son thinking that the falling log caused his pain, do I just need to see that the log was not the cause of his upset and that it was something in his mind or something in my mind? Can you explain? David. Well, Using the analogy of his mind and my mind means that the mind believes that it is guilty. My mind as a teacher of God is to be positive, absolutely certain that the mind is guiltless. Friend, so he was calling forth the witness that he was guilty. And if I reinforce that, then I am reinforcing that he is in fact guilty. David, in your own mind, if you go to that level of the metaphor. 
friend. So if I see him in pain, then that is the witness to my mind that pain is possible and real? David Yes, you have to believe in pain before you can see it. Pain is a concept. You cannot see it in the world unless you believe it. Friend, so there is a way to have this scenario going on with the wailing and the cut in the skin without perceiving any pain? And if you dreamed that happened, would there be anything to be upset about? Could her son be hurt? David That is where the oh comes in. Like, oh, I feel pity. I have been through that too. What I? Has Christ been through that? Has Christ been through pain? Can Christ identify pain? No. There is a belief. You think that you know that those things really happen and therefore you feel bad that someone else is going through it. That is giving it reality. It is saying that you know it is real. Right now, I happen to not be experiencing it, but you are. And I feel for you. That thinking has to be given up. That is not healing. Friend, that is the unhealed healer. David, that is definitely the unhealed healer. You can be light. Not in a sense of cracking jokes or making fun of this or that. But there can be a sense of lightness and joy. That is what the whole day can be. A sense of lightness and joy. Regardless of whether the sun is shining and people are coming over expressing gratitude or whether there seem to be wailing children, floods, hurricanes or friend, an annoying dog or David or your house burning down. That was a good example. Just watching that big mansion burn down in a very detached way. Knowing it was purposeful. Seeing that there was a purpose there. For many, that was an extreme example. The ego says, Oh my gosh, what if that were my house? But when you are the dreamer of the dream... There cannot be loss and hurt. And it does not even matter about going back and thinking. Well, I blew it with my son. That is the past too. That thought is a made-up perception. You have to keep coming back to a present intention. What is my purpose now? Friend, Then how do you use a situation like that? David, it is being used. By talking about it in the way it is being talked about, it is given a new purpose. The whole purpose is to give it a new purpose. And when can that purpose be given? Right now is the only time it can ever be given. Words are just symbols. Friend, I do find it helpful to use an example like that and run through. David, yes, and you can see that you are absolved now. That is what you finally come to. Now is the only time you could be absolved or feel guilt. It is a present moment decision. It gets away from the linear sense of, well, friend, I could have done it better. David, there is that linear person again. Whenever you go back and feel personally responsible for what you did, 
or what you failed to do. You are raising body thoughts up to the level of mind. You are seeing yourself as a linear person, a person in linear time. And that is guilt-inducing. It is the denial of yourself, your spiritual self. The miracle, on the other hand, regardless of what was said or done, literally lifts the mind. The mind is watching the dream and that includes all perceptions of everything that the body ever seems to do or say or think. Even thinking of yourself as having judgment thoughts like I haven't got it yet. I will never get this. Once you are above it, it is like aha, instant release. And if we go on here, we will see that that is the whole point. The idea that a body can be sick is a central concept in the ego's thought system. This thought gives the body autonomy. There is the thought of personhood, separates it from the mind and keeps the idea of attack inviolate. If the body could be sick, atonement would be impossible. A body that can order a mind to do as it sees fit could merely take the place of God and prove salvation is impossible. Manual for Teachers, Section 22 That is the reversal of cause and effect. If it was possible for a body to order a mind to do anything, then God is dead, as Nietzsche said. God is out of the picture. The belief then is that there is no God and I am helpless. I am the victim of this dream now. It tells me what to do. I have to follow its laws. I am a little dream figure that is stuck and helpless. I can only do certain things to hold off the inevitable. When this world chooses, closes in on me and the breath goes out of the body, friend, what is going to happen to me then? Am I going to hell or am I going to heaven? How fearful! Friend, still, You can either be in your right mind or your wrong mind. (laughs) David, I think our friend is being facetious. That is how the ego looks at it. That scariness is the ego. You have every right to be fearful based on the way you perceive yourself.